Hi there and welcome to the first of three short videos looking at aspects of the Brexit debate, the economics of the UK's decision to leave the European Union. That happened on the 23rd of June 2016 and the Prime Minister Theresa May triggered Article 50 of the Treaty on European Union on the 29th of March 2017. So that triggering of Article 50 began the process of exit. Of course, there's a lot of uncertainty over the direction the UK economy may take after we finally leave the European Union. So this is the first of three separate videos as part of an overall revision webinar where we provide an update on developments in that debate. In particular, we're going to be focusing on synoptic economics. That's going to be revision video three, identifying some of the micro and macro effects of leaving the customs union and the single market. In this first section, so we split the webinar up into three shorter videos for you, we're going to take a look at trade patterns, trade balances, the customs union, and do a quick, quick bit of revision on the single market for you. So let's take a look, first of all, at trade patterns, and in particular, the major export markets for the UK. This table takes uh, data for 2016. It's the latest year for which we have information, and hopefully you can see straight away that the EU, taken as a whole, is easily the UK's largest trading partner. Indeed, four of the top six export markets, export destinations for UK goods and services, are countries inside the EU. In 2016, British exports to the European Union were worth £236 billion, pounds, and that's 43% of all UK exports. Imports from the EU, well, they were much bigger, £318 billion, pounds, 54% of all UK imports. United States is our biggest single export market in terms of country, Germany's second. Of course, the European Union is a single market, so we have to add those collectively together. And this chart gives another overview of the, of the importance of the European Union in terms of UK trade by region for 2016. Asia is rising, becoming more important, but in relative terms at the moment, quite insignificant. Indeed, this may be quite hard to, to see, but if you look closer towards the bottom of this table, if we look at exports from the UK, uh, in terms of billions, we, we've sold nearly £17 billion pounds worth of products to China in 2016. But that's only 3% of total exports. Uh, our exports to India have increased, um, but nearly £6 billion pounds per year. That's only 1% of our total exports. Indeed, the share of exports going to India has increased by about, let's say, two-thirds of 1%, but that's over the last 20 years. So significant differences in trade patterns there. And the trade balance is also quite important. So the UK tends to run a trade surplus with Ireland, but significant, chunky trade deficits with countries such as Germany and with Spain. The UK, in fact, an, had an overall trade deficit, the value of imports greater than the value of exports, a trade deficit of £82 billion pounds with the EU in 2016. There was a surplus of £14 billion on trade in services, but a £96 billion pound trade deficit in 2016 with the EU in goods, cars, washing machines, DVD players, all that kind of stuff. The EU, of course, as a whole, has got bigger over the years. There have been, in fact, a number of enlargements, six main waves of enlargement with a number of countries joining. The UK joined in 1973, but obviously pressed Article 50 to, to leave uh, that will be March 2019, won't it? So these are the latest countries to join the EU. Croatia was the most recent country to join. About a decade ago, Bulgaria mainly came in. And 2004, 10 countries joined. The biggest single enlargement. So the EU, uh, if you're revising this topic, the European Union is a customs union. Other examples include the Eurasian Customs Union and also the Southern African Customs Union. So there are other examples to choose other than the EU. Key point about a customs union is that it's a group of countries who come together to establish free trade between the member nations. So they try as best as possible to get rid of import tariffs and import quotas and other forms of trade protection. And that's designed to encourage trade creation within the European Union. But they also add in a common external tariff. This is quite important. 
Common External Tariff, CET. And that's applied by every country at the same level to imports from non-member countries. So, for example, the tariff, the import tariff on South Korean LCD TV screens will be the same applied by the UK if we're inside the EU as Germany, as France, as Italy, as Holland, etc. But the tariff on TV screens will be different to the tariff on beef. But every country applies the same common tariff on beef and the same common tariff on textiles or other products. And of course, we're also leaving, if the politics can be believed, we're leaving the single market. The single market is a deeper form of integration built on four freedoms, the free movement of labour. So citizens of the EU can live and study and work in any country. And that, of course, the aim, one of the aims is to improve the mobility of labour in the single market. Free trading goods, businesses can sell their products anywhere in the EU's member states. Consumers can buy where they want with no penalty. Free movement of services, free trade in services, so things like personalised services, pensions, architecture, telecoms, marketing, they can be offered in any member state. And crucially, free movement of capital. So financial capital can flow freely between member states and citizens can use financial services, banking, insurance uh, in any EU state as part of the single market. Britain is leaving, or always scheduled to leave, the single market in 2019. Okay, that's the end of our first video. Check out our second video in a few minutes on the options for the UK when it leaves the EU. What are the different models the UK might choose outside of the EU?